Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Gujarat Narmada Valley Fertilizers and Chemicals Limited. Thank you, FY22 Earnings Conference Hall, hosted by Bhatiwala and Karani Securities, India Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation continues. Should you need assistance during the conference call, Please signal for an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Viral Shah from Bhaktiwala and Karani Securities in the Private Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Participants, it seems you lost the line from Mr. Shah. Just a moment while we reconnect him again. Participants have the line now reconnected from Mr. Viral Shah. Over to you, sir. Uh, hi, good afternoon, uh, everyone, and welcome to the third quarter and nine month FY22 earnings call of Gujarat Tamanda Valley Fertilizers and Chemicals Limited, hosted by. Uh, Bhatliwala and Karani Securities. Uh, from the management, we have Mr. D.V. Parikh, Executive Director and uh, CFO, uh, Mr. Vyan Patel, Head of Department O&M, and Mr. A.C. Shah, General Manager and Company Secretary. Uh, I would like to thank the management for giving us the opportunity to host this call. Uh, we would begin the call with opening remarks from the management, post which uh, we will have a question and answer session. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shah. Uh, on behalf of the GNFC management, we welcome all the investors to this uh, con call meet for the discussion on unaudited financial results, standalone and consolidated for the third quarter and nine months ended on 31st December 2021. And uh, the management has already placed on its website as well as the websites of Bombay Stock Exchange and the National Stock Exchange, a detailed uh, PPT presentation on the analysis of the performance and financials of the company for the third quarter and nine months for the inf uh, information of all the investors. Uh, now I welcome, uh, see, DV, I will introduce our, my colleagues on uh, this con call meet. See, D.V. Parikh is the executive director and Chief Financial Officer, Sivayan Patel, uh, Head of Department, Operations and Maintenance, and Mr. G.I. Desai, he is General Manager, Industrial Products Marketing Department. Uh, now I request C. D. B. Parikh to start with his opening remarks on the performance and finances of the company for third quarter and nine months ended on 31st December 2021. Over to C. Parikh, please. Thank you, Mr. Shah. And good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you very much to Bhatliwala and Karani for holding this call. And warm welcome to the analyst, investors, and others who have joined the call. Between the last call and this call, there are certain important developments which will be first covered at a cross-border level as well as at a domestic level. At a cross-border level, uh, actually, energy prices are on the boil, be it uh, gas, oil or coal. These energy prices uh, are supposed to be actually firing up the economies, but actually the prices are firing up themselves because of the geopolitical tensions. The situation on gas is arising mainly because of the Russia and Europe disconnect, especially relating to not to pipeline. Whereas in respect of oil, the disruption is because of the major countries commanding the supply chain. Uh, Russia joining them known as OPEC plus. In case of coal, because of the environmental reason, the availability is very limited, which is driving up the prices up. The other part is from the environment angle, there are like various agencies as well as government which are driving down the use of non-fossil fuels and encouraging non-fossil fuels. Uh, there has been a summit called COP26 in Glasgow uh, last quarter wherein different countries pledged themselves for reducing the emissions, etc. 
So these are the developments on a cross-country uh, level. Apart from that, there is an important proxy war going on between U.S. Russia as well as U.S. China. Russia trying to command Ukraine and China trying to command Taiwan is actually creating these tensions. On domestic front, uh, this month there is a budget announcement which mainly focuses on the capex or investment-led growth. In terms of the announcement of budget, like uh, we are affected, GNFC is affected in terms of its two products, which is methanol and acetic acid, where the duty is reduced by around 2.5%. However, there is a positive sign since the duty on oil is reduced by 2.5%. So on a net basis, we expect the effect to be either neutral or positive. So uh, ESG front, like company has been trying for garnering the support of experts in this regard. Apart from that, there is on fertilizer and chemical front, there are few other important developments. On the fertilizer front, as we know, there was a subsidy, budgeted subsidy of around 80,000 crore, 79,000 plus crore, so 80,000 rounded, which is uh, now revised estimate is 140,000 crore. Whereas in the budget next year, it is standing at 105 crore with around uh, 63,000 crore for urea and the rest for the others, NPK and others. As far as subsidy disbursement is concerned, the government, even after October, November, which normally dries up this time, like last year, there has been a smooth flow of subsidy. Uh, there was some buildup, but thereafter in January, there is a good disbursement of the subsidy. On the NBS front, the subsidy beyond October is also continued, so which is a positive sign has given some breather to all NPK manufacturers, including us. So these are some of the developments on the fertilizer front. On the chemical front, the overall imports have increased except for one product where we deal in. WNA imports have reduced over the last seven months data available in the public domain. Whereas rest of the cases, it has substantially increased, be it TDI, acetic acid, AN melt, etc. So this is the scenario in which uh, companies are operating both in fertilizer and chemical. Uh, now touching upon the financial part, uh, we'll first start with the physical, the quantitative performance part of it. For the quarter ending, the production is higher except for the methanol, which we did not operate for the cost economics reason, whereas sales are a bit lower in terms of absolute quantities. However, on a YOI basis, whether on quarterly or year-to-date basis, both production and sales are higher. The main reason for a good performance is, number one, a general increase in the realization. Two is the pricing discipline, especially on the part of IP products marketing. Three is avoiding certain pitfalls on the procurement side. Fourth is product mix. And fifth is make or buy decisions when your cost economics do not work out. So these are the basically five reasons uh, where, uh, which are responsible for the good performance and the company has recorded uh, like 1427 crore of PBT and 1060 crore of PAT, apart from which are the highest ever, uh, even considering the annualized performance of the company over the last 46 years. The revenue is just one or two percent down than the highest ever in the 46 years history of the company. So this is what is happening overall. In, in terms of the performance, when we break it down to the segment level, it is predominantly the chemical segment, which is concourse fertilizer. We are neither expanding. Uh, and second part is a control industry, more or less. Uh, urea is a control industry. NPK are semi-control industry. But except for the breather on subsidy, there is nothing more to earning that. So uh, both taken together like others as well as fertilizer and contribute to around 1% each. And 98% of the profit is coming from the chemical segment, uh, whereas the revenue is coming at a rate of 68% in the quarter. So these are the overall financial performance as well as profit and loss account is concerned. Coming to the balance sheet part of it, uh, the balance sheet is growing with the increased accruals. And it's a healthy and clean balance sheet with a size of around 9,500 crore. In terms of working capital at the quarter end, there is some buildup of the subsidy as well as inventories at the quarter end, which is chewing away the cash. And therefore, the cash flow has not kept the momentum along with the profit. But in January, there is a substantial cash release because of both, of, both the factors, liquidation of stock as well as receipt of subsidy. 
on the future plan of the company like we already covered in the media release as well as the presentation uh, there is a lined up capex of around 1700 crore i'm i'm talking about the rounded in hundreds of crores so around 1700 capex is lined up uh, over a period of next 3 years apart from that there is a active examination for the bigger investment which my colleague mr vayan patel will cover uh, in the question answer session so with this i hand over the session back to uh, batliwar and karani for the question answer session thank you very much thank you very much sir yeah ladies yes, and gentlemen sir. we will now begin the question answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their own telephone If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, please press star and one. First question is from the line of Mr. Jamoria from Anvil Research. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, I have two questions. So, first is on uh, the ammonia part. So, how we are placed with respect to of our uh, ammonia requirement because uh, it is a mother plant for our urea, ammonium nitrate, weak nitric acid. So, are we currently utilizing our uh, ammonia capacity fully with the uh, increase in the oil prices and probably the natural gas prices, or are we importing ammonia for our uh, Uh, urea as well as other chemical products. May okay. I am Devi Parik. Yes. Uh, see, as far as ammonia is concerned, both the capacity, gas-based ammonia capacity as well as oil-based ammonia capacities are utilized fully. We are not importing ammonia. At times, we try to do an exchange when we fall short of the total urea requirement, and if at all we import it, it is for the reason of uh, neem-based. urea production otherwise it is not required okay as of now we are self sufficient in the urea production okay and even sir, during the last quarter we have been self sufficient okay and sir when when we produced ammonia so our first priority would be towards the urea production and uh, left over would be going towards ammonium nitrate as well as the other products and let's say if there is any shortfall we try to cover it through import so in terms of priority always the urea would be the first one and then cells or we have some dedicated capacities for chemicals and we do that sort of bifurcation no it is not like that see ammonia has like two streams uh, like i said oil and gas yeah and both are sufficient to cater to the requirement of achieving the reassert capacity level of urea as well as the required production of chemical we are not sacrificing any chemical production because of urea because of the sufficiency on the ammonia front on the upstream okay okay uh, and sir my second question is on uh, concentrated nitric acid so like a uh, uh, few days back there was a management interview where they mentioned that we produce more of cna instead of producing tda so this was mainly because uh, uh, the cna was giving us more profit so How has been the situation currently with respect to the TDI plants, TDI one Bharuj plant as well as TDI two the H plant? Okay, uh, first uh, about your question on operation of the concentrated nitric acid. See TDI uh, like we have two uh, two production facilities, one at Bharuj and one at the H. Yeah. At times we could not operate for input cost economics reason the TDI two plant. and therefore whatever was the concentrated nitric acid available in the upstream there was a market enough market available for it which could be sold by ip marketing at a very comfortable price so uh, what happened tdi was not giving the, those kinds of attractive contributions whereas at this point in time last quarter cna has given more contribution than what is coming from tdi so that was the reason tdi was not run and concentrated nitric acid was sold as a priority it's basically nothing but a product priority a product mix priority which was decided okay but sir how has been the situation currently so are we still on the same line 
in terms of producing more CN and stopping TDI sales or has the dynamics changed with respect to the debottlenecking also which we have undertaken for the TDI? Hello. Participants have sent a lot of line for the management. Of course, you will please stay pensive while we reconnect the management speakers. Apologies for the delay. We have the management line now reconnected. So you may go ahead. Yeah, sir. So my question was, uh, how has um, been the situation? Yeah, yeah, sir. So my question was that, how has been the situation currently? Are we still producing more CNA and uh, producing less TDI, or with the TDI debottlenecking already completed, we have shifted more towards the produ production of TDI with uh, the improvement in the dynamics? No, TDI production has already been scheduled effective 1st February. Okay. So there are, barring for the certain hiccups in the plant, uh, TDI manufacturing has started at the hedge. Okay. And in case uh, there are certain issues of operational nature and there is an excess CNA, which is usually get, uh, getting sold in the market. Okay. And sir, with the increase in the TDI production, we would be getting some increased byproduct also HCL. So how we are dealing with uh, those things? Uh, are we planning some downstream product for HCL so that we need not have to dispose it from our plant or we would continue selling HCL in the market? I will request Mr. Yogesh Patel to respond on this. Uh, he is from the business strategy side. Uh, see, HCL, uh, for selling HCL, as, as of now, we don't have any plan because we are able to dispose of whatever is produced. Okay. Uh, earlier, we had a plan of uh, going for uh, DCP project, but that project is held now, and uh, as of now, we don't have any plan for uh, uh, any product that is on HCL. So we'll be selling in the market uh, with cost plus or sometimes even negative cost also, we are able to push uh, surplus HCL in the market. Okay. But that is not uh, uh, stopping us from operating TDI plant at the higher no, level? No, no. So far, um, not a single hour is wasted on uh, account of surplus HCL. Okay. That's not going to be a bottleneck in future, near future. Okay. And sir, my last question would be if you can touch upon some of our other products like nitrobenzene, aniline as well as formic acid, how they have done for the last quarter as well as for the nine months? Uh, so if you want to uh, uh, see, except for aniline on a nine monthly basis, aniline and methanol are the two products where the production has been lower than its capacity over a nine month period. Over a three month period, it is only methanol which is not produced. Otherwise, all products are produced to its full capacity. Okay. And sir, with respect to the nitrobenzene, if you can touch upon that. Nitrobenzene is an upstream product for uh, aniline. Okay. So uh, there also we cater predominantly for aniline and we also sell uh, outside in the commercial market and uh, that market is well served. Okay. Okay. Thank you for answering the questions in detail, sir. I'll join back in the queue if any. Thank you. Question is from Ajit Shah from Unique Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, the TDI bottlenecking, sir, what we have done, there you are saying we will increase the turnover of around 400 crores annually. So that project, uh, project you said it started, correct? 
since last quarter yes de bottlenecking is completed now the plant should start manufacturing at a higher level than earlier one and what is the uh, profit margin that we get on a tda no no these are sensitive product sensitive and price sensitive questions uh okay so uh, we will not be in a position to answer what is the exact profit margin of tdi right during last quarter in this quarter or is already out so if you can share i don't know okay uh, there are positive contribution in tdi both one and two this is what we can say hmm okay the level of contribution will be little price sensitive question so we are staying away from it ओके ठीक है फाइन ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ राजीव शाह फ्रॉम के सी सिक्योरिटीज प्लीज गो अहेड गुड आफ्टरनून सर आई हैड थ्री क्वेरीज इफ यू कुड आंसर प्लीज नंबर वन इज एज बाय गॉड्स ग्रेस द कोविड मेनेस इज ऑन द डिक्लाइन <clears throat> should tdi demand a uh, demand pick up more than what it was for the past two quarters secondly if the international oil prices are going to touch 100 as what they are forecasting how much proportion should it affect our company and thirdly the last quarter of the coming year should it be on the same line i know you cannot give exact figures but can we be optimistic about the future of our company sir okay now uh, first on the question is on tdi demand uh, i request our ip marketing head mr jitan desai to answer this yes good afternoon mr sir thank you sir uh, tdi is basically used for the comfort products that you know for mattresses and furniture right that is whenever there is some recession or some uh, uh, covid like natural calamity the first to hit is the comfort products demand and that is why right. tdi demand was suppressed in due to the covid and right. it was up and down i would say in last few years as the waves like the wave up and down the covid right. intensity was remained up and down during this last two years and right. so as the tdi demand but now you have rightly said that with the subside of uh, covid the demand should increase okay sir your next question was regarding the oil and its impact correct okay so oil definitely will have impact but the current spreads uh, are uh, having cushion so we should be in a position to wither away any crisis because of any conflict which might happen and disruption okay. because of that in the oil supply whether from like russia venezuela or opec countries okay thank you sir your there was and a third my, question yeah, was a my third, third question, question about yeah, my third how do we see how do yes. we see the how do we see the forward? coming quarter coming sir please because yes. this quarter la past last quarter the results were so excellent and we have to talk about the about the quarter okay 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 thank you sir thank you uh, rajiv does that answer your question yeah i just wanted to uh, from a shareholder angle view also how would be the last quarter what should we expect if they are not in a point to give any light on that so be it yes so we have given a qualitative answer that is going to be stable we can't quantify it for the reasons okay. known to you as well as us yes 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 sir thank you thank you sir i think you have answered all my queries sir okay thank you very much next question is from the line of deepak chitrola from philip capital please go ahead uh thank you and uh, congratulations first of all on the good set of numbers my uh, first question is around the uh ammonia side uh, as you previously explain about uh, you know that we produce ammonia on a you know gas based and the you know this oil based so if i understand it correctly you know what if the ammonia which we are basically producing for, uh, uh, from a ga- natural gas is is basically used to produce uh, urea right and there is no excess ammonia which we have as of now 
uh, which basically are utilizing, uh, you know, for chemical business. And, you know, whatever the ammonia which we are producing out of oil is, is basically used for chemical products. So there is no shortfall as of now, like we explained. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you want to know the quantum of ammonia? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, so basically my question was that, uh, you know, I mean, uh, the the ammonia which we are using, uh, you know, for urea is basically a subsidized gas, right? So uh, my point was that, uh, are we using the subsidized gas, uh, you know, to produce uh, the chemical products? No, no, we cannot. Because okay. there is a government guideline through DOF, the Department of Fertilizer, that all subsidized gas has to be used for production of urea. By default, we, we cannot use that for chemical at all. For chemical, we have to like produce both feed and fuel is either oil, gas, or coal at market price. Sure, sure. So basically, whatever we are producing is basically entirely used for urea production, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, subsidized gas is meant for urea only. And off like what has happened, even this subsidized gas, the quantum has reduced substantially. Like uh, we use around 1.25 million uh, SCM a day, uh, out of which very small proportion is of a subsidized gas. Okay. Okay, so majority of the gas is therefore RLNG, which has to be used. And at times you have to source through beyond contractual commitment through EPMC. Okay, understood. Sure. And my second question is regarding the capex. Uh, uh, you know, you mentioned about 1,700 uh, crores of capex uh, over the next three years. So, I mean, of course, you highlighted uh, the ongoing project, uh, which is already there on the, you know, uh, CNA and uh, formic acid. And also, you talk about uh, future projects. So, if, can you just quantify the timeline for those? Next three years. Yeah, I mean, all the, all the, uh, I mean, uh, products which we are basically, uh, you know, uh, uh, thinking about. Okay, uh, your, the specific answer to your question, the formic acid should be operational by March. Okay. The concentrated nitric acid should be up and running by October, November this year. And the rest three major one, like weak nitric acid of 200,000, uh, mm -hmm. ammonium nitrate of 100,000, and ammonia of 50,000 should be operational in next three years time. I see, okay. And uh, so roughly, so how, how we can look at this CapEx in terms of like, for example, in terms of contribution towards say, uh, in terms of revenue. So as you mentioned on the, for the ongoing project, but if we look at uh, the entire CapEx together, can we accept uh, asset turn of more than two times? Uh, see, not okay. The capex will result into two things. One is the cost reduction part, and second is the top line part. But the overall IRR which we consider is are between 10 to 12 percent post tax. Okay. okay. Minimum. Okay. Sure. And whenever such IRR is not there, then we take decision based on uh, the other reasons like strategic reason. Mm -hmm. It is not always necessary that it has to match that criteria, but exceptions have to be carved out for different reasons. Sure, sure. And uh, so my la this uh, uh, last question is basically on the, you know, the margin. Of course, we had a good amount of margin, uh, you know, this year because of the, you know, the good relation across the commodities which we have seen. But if we, somebody wants to look at, you know, uh, over a long term to medium term, like say, what could be the sustainable margin profile which we can have uh, you know, over the next two or three years down the line, uh, you know, we can work with, you know, of course, CapEx, uh, which we have already announced, we will definitely going to support to some extent to that side. But what could be the sustainable, you know, margins going forward, which we can look at? Okay. Regarding margin, see, as far as quantification is concerned, it will not be possible to give any definitive quantification on the level of margin. Okay. But we expect, given our history, given our strength, of ventures we have, uh, we should be earning uh, more or less what we have been earning so far over these years and gradually adding to that. Mm -hmm. And on a turnover to profit ratio, it should improve, the bottom line should improve over a period of time. No, I was asking because, you know, we have seen quite volatile, obviously, in terms of margin because of the, you know, the commodity nature of our business. So, uh, you know, I mean, if you look at uh, over the past 10 years history, I mean, most of the 
based on the you know, gas or oil prices, we have seen quite volatility in terms of you know our earnings or margins. So, so that is actually talk. the reason we are not trying to quantify because there is sure. no certainty on any part, whether output part or input part. How sure. Products mix is balanced in such a way that part can. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And the so last thing, if I can add uh, uh, regarding this, uh, you know, the fertilizer business. So as of as I understand correctly, sir, we just have uh, in A and P, we just produce. Uh, uh, this 2020 grade, right? Uh, uh, that's the only grade which we have in the portfolio. Yes, 2020 zero zero. Sure, sure. And uh, any plans to add any, uh, you know, further grades going forward? In fertilizer? Yeah, yeah. No. Sure, sure. Thanks, sir. Thanks, thanks for the answer. Thank you very much. That's up for fertilizer trading, which we are planning. The next question is from the line of Nitesh from Prabhu Zahar. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity. And congratulations uh, to the team on a uh, very good performance in Q3. Uh, uh, so, my uh, question is uh, that, you know, as, as I understand, uh, GNFC is the only manufacturer in India for products like. Uh, uh, acidic acid, the DEI, anidine, formic acid, uh, uh, you know, etc. Uh, and while the balance requirement is largely, uh, you know, is, is all imported. So, is the spread benefit uh, coming through uh, for the company in the current inflationary environment uh, uh, due to higher uh, ocean freight costs, uh, you know, which is uh, pushing up the landed prices of the uh, products which are exclusively being manufactured by the company? Actually, uh, there was some disruption in your voice. Will you please come again on your question very clearly and crisply? Uh, yeah. Hello. Am I clear now, sir? Yeah. Now, or let, yeah. let me repeat your question. You are saying that we are the only manufacturer in certain products like uh, acetic acid, formic, aniline, etc. Okay, this is what we heard up to. Now, what is your question with respect to that? Yeah, so 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 my question was, uh, uh, you know, so, so we have seen the spreads, uh, uh, you know, being at very high levels, uh, you know, which is actually resulting in a very strong profitability for us. So, uh, uh, you know, is it basically, you know, because of the inflationary environment, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, with regards to the ocean freight costs, you know, which is basically pushing up the landed costs of imports and you know which is uh, you know which is driving uh, this extra profitability for us you know in, in the products which are being exclusively manufactured uh, you know by the, by the company and you know to, 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 to that extent would it be uh, you know would it be uh, temporary or uh, you know is there something something structural also you know which can provide uh, support to these uh, spreads when, when the freight costs cool off? Uh, no, it is like difficult to say in future how it will pan out. But then if the feedstock and fuel cost is rising for everybody, market has to accept uh, and uh, price the product accordingly. What the benefit we are also currently reaping, number one. Number two, because of this implication of the complex, we are in a position to juggle between the or amongst the product. And the third is like a conscious kind of procurement. So uh, given all the levers, uh, we will try and see how the margin can be maintained or enhanced. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. So, uh, so, so my next question is, uh, you know, what, what restricts uh, other players to get into some of uh, you know some of the products that GNFC has been doing manufacturing exclusively for for last many years. So as we see, uh, you know the company's profitability uh, in chemical segment has been fairly healthy. Uh, you know if we see the last five six years especially. So what is it that we are doing better or you know differently compared to others, or do we have any technology tie-ups or any exclusivities? Uh, you know as far as uh, you know some of the products are concerned. In our presentation, we have already given uh, who are all the partners for the technology tire. And for a certain products like uh, acetic acid, uh, even aniline, uh, the technology is not so easily available. 
okay the the people who invented are actually manufacturers somehow uh, we have got this technology license and we are uh, manufacturing apart from that the kind of setup which we have is making it possible to manufacture at a in a cost effective manner so these are the results uh, uh, as a result of which sure sure okay uh, thank you for this and uh, so uh, so one more thing uh, so on the import duty side uh, in the initial part of your uh, remarks you had mentioned that uh, it will be uh, you know this uh, reduction of uh, import duty on methanol and acetic acid in the budget uh, you mentioned it will be either neutral or it will be positive uh, did i get that uh, correctly and i just wanted to understand uh, uh, you know how will it be uh, you know positive uh, for us given uh you know that the duty reduction would make imports more competitive okay you see uh, for both this product uh, methanol and uh, acetic acid uh we have to price our product at ipp so it is going to be somewhat competitive but at the same time the feed which is oil uh, the import duty has reduced and we have already negotiated the price with the supplier the benefit of which is going to come so uh, by and large we feel that the effect should be neutral or positive because of the price dynamics it is not uh, possible to quantify the exact impact except on input so on input we have already quantified internally and based on our experience we know that it will at least be neutral if not positive all right okay uh okay and so uh, maybe uh, one last thing on on the capex so uh, you know given that we uh, you know we had uh, 2000 crores plus uh, uh, you know on our balance sheet uh, uh, in the last reported numbers in september quarter uh, and after that uh, there should have been uh, addition to to uh, uh, you know to this cash component i mean has it increased or i mean can you can you give the cash on books uh, figure uh, as of uh, 31st december Uh, the cash on books as of december is around 2500 crore rupees 25 regarding the deployment of which apart from the already planned capex uh, the business strategy group is already examining certain capex uh, of high value which will take some take some time to come in shape okay any color that you can give on the high value capex and the quantum if you can like you know any ballpark uh, number that you can give Yeah, I mean, apart from the seventeen hundred crores number, that is that is already fine, right? Uh, see, as as you have heard in a interview by our managing director, we already have a lined up plan for three thousand crore uh, capex, which will be through uh, within three next three years. That is by twenty six. Now we are also working on duplicating some of the existing chemicals, which you said where we are number one or we are only producer. uh but as a long term plan since we are a cashless company you know we are also under pressure that how to how you know base utilization of this cash so our long term plan is uh, we are planning for uh, naphtha based cracker complex where main item will be ethylene and polyl, uh, propylene which are always in you know short supply and all downstream products depending on uh, the feasibility study uh, which is under way So depending on that uh, we are uh, you know planning for large capex in the range of 12000 to 15000 crore uh, which is a long term plan and it depends on uh, how you know what are what is the outcome of our feasibility report so this is our uh, both short term and long term plan uh, uh, we are uh, you know going to move ahead okay okay Okay, so so that's very helpful, sir. Thank you so much, and all the best uh, for the future projects. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Next question is from Line of Urvila Shah from Isha Security. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes. Hello. Am I audible? Yes. Yes. Clearly. Yeah. Yes. Congratulations, uh, team, uh, for the good result, and uh, uh, thank you for an elaborative presentation. I think this is the first time we have given this elaborative presentation, and I hope that we continue it. 
uh, I think a uh, uh, lot of my questions about uh, um, capex and margins you have answered. So, uh, sir, I think uh, 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 can you just confirm that what can be sustainable margins? Uh, you said that we would be trying to uh, improve it in the coming quarters as well. Uh, so, is that understanding correct? Would you like to answer? Future margin. Margin. This is already explained. Ma'am, ma this is already explained. Uh, is, okay. is there anything further so you I... intend to, you are looking for? Okay, fine. Okay, I'm just confirming. You uh, said that because you what has were... happened, we cannot give guidance of a quantified nature. Okay. Because of the regulatory restriction, that is the constraint. Okay. Sir, I also wanted to understand about the dividend policy. Uh, uh, I think last year we had a payout of 18%. So, uh, what kind of uh, dividend out are we looking at? Is there a policy that we follow? Uh, I will request our company secretary to respond on this. Madam, our company is a consistently dividend paying company and uh, except for one year all through the company has uh, uh, been paying the dividend good return to the shareholders investors and we expect to maintain that tempo for the uh, present current financial year also uh, however it is uh, not advisable to quantify because of the uh, regulatory restrictions right but the management uh, considering the consistent uh, and uh, uniform long-term dividend paying policy, the company has already placed on the website its dividend distribution policy as per the regulatory provisions. So in line with that, we will definitely, uh, uh, management will continue to reward the investors in a fair manner. Okay. One last question I had was, uh, post the CapEx, the three years CapEx that uh, we have uh, referred in this call, so what can be the revenue breakup between the, our two segments? The entire CapEx will result into a revenue increase and a profit increase in chemical segment. Nothing on the fertilizer side. So the ratio will definitely go in favor of chemicals. Okay. Apart from that, we are also thinking into the uh, line of trading of fertilizer, which probably will ramp up the top line and some bottom line into fertilizer funds. But it all depends upon the kind of opportunities because currently the imports are very dear, dearly priced. And uh, uh, importantly, be making losses in the domestic prices. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Next question is from the line of Manish Oswal from Nirmal Bank. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. <clears throat> thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, my question on the energy cost uh, uh, during the quarter, so uh, can you confirm us uh, this uh, current quarterly energy cost reflects the underlying market rates or any low cost inventory also ben uh, benefited the PNL? No, it's market rate driven. No, market the rate. Power okay. and fuel cost is totally market driven. I mean, uh, point is uh, the coal price uh, and the gas price, uh, the current market rates are suggesting. So we do not have any benefit of low cost inventory which we consume during the quarter and because of that, the PNL is energy cost on a lower side. Not significant. You are talking about probably the weighted average price which gets reflected for different procurements. Okay. okay. Of course, uh, uh, there, there, there are because of the rising prices, the cost will go up. But then mm -hmm. it's a dynamic and uh, that effect is significant. Right, sir. Right. Sir. Understood. The second question on the, you said in your opening remarks that uh, one of the factors of uh, better uh, 
performance of chemical division is a product mix. So, uh, and we have shipped certain volume from TDI to the CNA. So that mix will continue in the quarter four or uh, that will change materially and that can have an impact on the overall operating margin of the chemical business? The product mix is, uh, is an outcome of a response to a situation. Okay. So depending upon the situation, we respond to it by changing our product mix. And last point, sir, in terms of our key product realization during the quarter and uh, the current product uh, realization trend, so any material uh, change of the price trend, uh, if, you, uh, if there is a material, you can highlight us. No, since we are saying stable, see, we are still like at the beginning of February. And secondly, mm -hmm. realization part is again a price sensitive part. So we cannot comment specifically whether realizations are improving or what. Okay, there are like information available in the specific public domains uh, which may be referred. But as far as we are concerned, we will not be in a position to comment on the price realization part of it. No problem, sir. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Kapit Kapoor from Kapoor and Company. Please go ahead. Yeah, Namaskar, sir, and uh, thank you for this opportunity. Sir, I joined a bit late, so uh, uh, forgive me for the repetition. Sir, firstly, uh, what are the projects uh, that would be commissioned in this financial year, and wh what is the plan for the next financial year and the capex uh, on the same amount to be spent? Uh, may we request that if you refer to this phone call transcript, you will get Correct, the answer sir. to okay. this. Okay, okay, okay. Right, sir. Uh, sir, can you give me some, some color on the current? Otherwise. Hello? If it's are okay, uh, we may do yes, that. Sir. Yes, sir, it is, it is okay with me, sir. I, 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 uh, it, is, it is correct on your part, sir. So what are the current uh, 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 prices of the key products post the exit of the December quarter? How have been the price trends uh, of our key products? In the international market, price regarding price, price trends, sir. Uh, when we exited the December quarter, the key product prices, and currently, uh, how have the uh, trends been for the price uh, prices of the key products? Mm -hmm. No, see, price trend like we have. This is the third time we are reporting. The price trend is indicative of certain price sensitivity. Okay. So uh, you may get that from the public domain rather than from us. Okay, sir. Sir, actually we are getting it from the public domain. It was just a confirmation on part of investors to speak directly. We get an opportunity to speak to you. So we were just trying to get some sense whether uh, the premise of this increase in trend is also being uh, substantiated by you. That was the only reason. We are, uh, the, the, yeah, yeah, price trends are available to us also, sir. You are right. It is in the, in, in the public domain. So that was my, I was just trying to validate the same from the management. The uh, price trend December quarter ke baad ki products ke kaise hai? Positive trajectory mein ki negative hai? Uh, gentlemen, you are right from expectation point of view, but uh, we are constrained because of the regulatory requirement. Correct, sir. Correct. Okay, we will be happy to assist you otherwise. But then we have Correct. to consider first the framework. Correct. Legal framework. Sir, coming to my last point, sir, uh, sir these are uh, uh, so, so, uh, uh, unimaginable times for companies uh, like us. Uh, and uh, especially, sir, for investors, uh, value creation ideas, these, these are times when uh, the management should uh, sit across the table and get the best minds uh, of how to create or unlock value uh, because th these trends are repeated, uh, are not... Uh, uh, we do not have we do not have a past inference of it that prices and the profitability of uh, uh, of uh, companies like the one which we are in the domain uh, 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 getting these kinds of profits so the, there should be uh, uh, there should be profit sharing uh, uh, ideas also that should be uh, the well documented to the investors just like that we have seen in the case of bpum where, where all the central psus have been advised or in fact if i use the word directed to distribute uh, X amount of profit or X amount of profit up, up to the network uh, with, with the investors. But, but since uh, our being a state PSU, we do not fall under the domain. 
we should uh, we should try to contemplate uh, with the government of of gujarat coming coming up with policy changes with the change of times uh, uh, that so that uh, as the earlier speaker has asked for uh, the different part there should be well documented this different distribution uh, policy sir so, so today you are speaking about capex of 12000 10000 crore but uh, but but you are unable to speak uh, of a different distribution policy so there there, there lies the anomaly sir so just just requesting the state government uh, authorities uh, uh, to to get uh, to get the uh, records uh, set the records on uh, set, set things on record that there should be a process by which the uh, investors uh, should be aware uh, of what kind of profit share uh, uh, profit will be distributed to us in form of dividends as well as from buyback by buyback should also be a, a part of distributing cash to your investors so investors not only look for growth but also look at regular uh, cash to be distributed to, to them because in this journey uh, chemical sector journey there will be times of ups and downs and we have seen uh, Uh, our company also uh, going through rough times so that was the thought process and please convey the same to the bo board uh, so that uh, things should be deliberated at the at the government level firstly then only it can flow uh, uh, it can come uh, 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 top down so that was that was my uh, small uh, uh, understanding and also sir i would also request to this forum that uh, uh, the, the the government of gujarat uh, should also look at unlocking values to the holding uh, uh, which 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 all uh, state psus are holding in them they 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 invested in the company for a specific purpose and today with with the type of market capitalization these companies are commanding the the value has uh, risen by many fold so some something should be decided on the basis of which that money should also be returned back to the government as well as to the shareholders so this was the th uh, thought from my side uh, and, and i hope and wish the best uh, to the team stay safe thank you yes uh, i am happy to inform that uh, will definitely welcome we definitely welcome your suggestion and we'll take up it uh, with appropriate forum through the top management uh, at the same time uh, we would like to mention that uh, the company operations being a listed public company uh, there is no intervention of the management direct or indirect in the uh, determination of market price of the share it is freely driven by the demand and supply the forces in the market secondly that uh, the company has always been considered and positive in rewarding the uh, investors <coughs> and over a period of time it is uh, noticeable quite uh, apparently means uh, clearly notable noticeable that the investors value has definitely improved much and far better level uh, in the past years the current price is hovering around uh, 500 rupees per share right that is the biggest uh, uh, enhancement of the shareholders value at the same time last year considering the uh, top line and bottom line especially the bottom line of the performance of the financials of the company the board of directors of course it is the prerogative of board of directors to recommend after considering the performance uh, uh, financial uh, parameters of the company and the final approval of the shareholders to pay the dividend last year you must have observed that there is a substantial increase in rewarding by way of declaration of higher dividend 8 rupees per share by the management right so management is definitely concerned for giving better returns to the shareholders at the same time the company i also mentioned earlier that the company has already framed its long term dividend policy which is already placed on the website of the company and on the basis in this within the framework of that policy definitely management and the board of directors will uh, uh, try to reward in a fair manner to the investors in the times to come so 
Uh, sir, what what would be the replacement cost for our? Uh, sorry to interrupt, Mr. Professor. Please request you to return to the queue for your follow-up questions as we have several parties. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'll I'll join the queue. Sir. Thank you for again, sir. Next question from Rajiv Shah from KC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you once again. I just uh, wanted to ask: Is there any possibility of the company splitting its two businesses, mainly fertilizer and chemical, into two different sections, whereby the chemical sec sector, which is doing so well, and all chemical shares have got very good valuation. They mostly are all talking in terms of P. They are all rating at 15, 20, 30 P. Whereas GNFC, at the moment, with even with today's closing price of 560 is commanding a PE of only about 7.5. That was my first question. And second question, is there any plans to subdivide or uh, make it into a two paid up share whereby the liquidity increases and small investors can also invest in your company? Okay. Uh, first, uh, about your uh, second question about division into share with dematerialization of the shares, Yes, uh, there is no much question of uh, liquidity issues in the share. Second, your, now your first question is regarding yes. splitting the business into yes, fertilizer yes. and chemical. Yes, so yes. Uh, two different shares of, you know, like for example, GNFC chemicals and GNFC fertilizer as two. Is that, is that a possibility? I am, I am, I am not a CA or anything. I am just, this thought came to my mind. So I wanted to share with you and ask you, please. From uh, the structure point of view, uh, conceptually you are right, but practically it is not possible given the nature of our operations. These are integrated operations and therefore we cannot have those kinds of different setups and okay. split the businesses into two. Okay. Uh, if you have been the regular remnant of the call, a couple of uh, quarter specs, the same question was asked by somebody and we okay. responded in an elaborate manner on this. Okay, 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 okay. Because I think once the stock gets split, for example, GSFC is a two paid up share, then GMDC is two paid up share. And then they, uh, that way, I'm just talking from the angle of benefit to the shareholder, the valuations increase. My reason to ask you was because GSFC and GMDC are two paid up, whereas GNFC and Gujarat Alkali are 10 paid up. You are right. Mr. Sir. It yes, doesn't please. make a difference whether you have a 2 rupee share or 10 rupee share with scenario of dematerialization. Right, as far right. as the total value is concerned, it is divided by the number of shares. Okay. Right, right. So no, you are right. Shares will increase fivefold if we divide by 2. Right, sir. Yes. So it, this, these, are, these are the, uh, like, not fundamental changes which we are looking at, okay? Dividing the shares right, into right. 2 rupees and all. Right, right. It is, you know, splitting is nothing but, you know, it is a psychological advantage which is passed on to shareholder. True. So this is, True. these type of practices are indulged by uh, company, you know, who are, you know, speculative in nature. Okay. Okay. So, so because, is, oh, uh, I, I, from, you know, I, all, all, all such type of practices. So we, we believe in concrete growth. Correct. Correct. Now I asked this question only because GSFC and GMDC were two paid up, which is, I think, your sister company only of Gujarat. That's why, that's why I put this question. And in fact, I would be happier with it remaining at 10 paid up. Thank you. Yeah. yeah? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, thank, you. thank you. Yeah. That Next question is from the line of Viraj Mahathir, an individual investor. Please go ahead. I had a question, sir. Thank you and congratulations. Excellent results. Company is well placed, it seems. What part of revenue increase in nine months of FY22 versus the previous year has come from volumes versus price? Uh, our IP marketing head, uh, Mr. Jitan Desai, will respond on this question. Our sales volume, we, we call top 10 products. We have to, uh, total 22 chemical products. And okay. 10 products, we said is the major products. Other products are either co-products or intermediates. 
So for top 10 products, the volume has increased, sales volume has increased by 4.3%, whereas sales value has increased by whopping 90%. Right. So you're saying the top 10 products which are most indicative, large part of the revenue increase has come from price increases and not volume increases. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. On a quarter-on-quarter quarter basis, you are right, uh, which was covered in the opening remark as well, that although there is an increase in the production, there is an accumulated inventory, and sales has been relatively little lower than that of the previous quarter. However, on a YOI basis, both quarterly as well as nine monthly, there is an increase in the sales and production. Yes, sir, but it seems like your volume increase is only 5%, right? Irrespective, that would get captured in your production. Your volume increase is only 5%, so 90% plus share of your revenue increases has been on the back of pricing. Yes. Uh, it is not entirely true to make this kind of statements. Uh, our, in a major way, you are right. Uh, the other angle is that of the product mix. Okay. For example, uh, when we sacrifice something, like we sacrifice internal production, okay, we bought it out from outside. So apparently there was a reduction. But overall we made a, a better bottom line out of it. Yes, sir. Which is why I asked the question on a revenue basis and not an EBITDA basis, right? Product mix would not make a difference at a revenue level, but an yes, EBITDA level make, it would make uh, I'll tell you how it makes. Let us take the case of uh, a, a swap between TDI and CNA. Okay. CNA price is less than one third of that of TDI. Okay. So what happens when you manufacture more of an upstream product, it makes a difference on the top line and it makes a altogether different difference depending upon the decision on the bottom line. So it is not that it doesn't make difference on the top line. This is the defeating example of how it makes difference on the top as well as bottom line. Understood. Understood. Very clear, sir. Thank you. So you're saying it's not as skewed as this, but it's clearly more skewed towards pricing for sure. I think that's apparent. In a major way, yes, you are right. Okay. So and the average is on both the sides. Uh, see, on the input side also, if you see, they have gone into three digits. Price increases, whether of gas, oil, even other products which we are consuming, raw, benzene, toluene, from two digit to three digit, the increases are there. But end of the day, either the margins are maintained or enhanced, depending upon the market opportunities. Understood, sir. Can you elaborate on your thought process around the capacity expansions that have been planned over the next few years? Is it driven Hello. more by no, import no, institution? Uh, or uh, ability to okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There is some background yeah, noise yeah. which is coming. So we did not hear out clearly. Capacity uh, expansions. Can you elaborate on the thought process around capacity expansion? Yes, yes. Is it driven more by import substitution or creating an export opportunity with China plus one inquiries? No, more of a kind of an import substitution. Okay, sir. And lastly, this question has been asked, but maybe I'll ask it slightly differently. Last few quarters, we've done EBITDA margins of 21, 26, 29%. Would you say a sustainable EBITDA margin as a range of 21 to 25% is possible? See, uh, would like to clarify. Yes. Sorry, this is uh, Ashwin Shah. I would like to clarify that uh, most of our products are market driven and uh, considering the uh, major chunk of uh, revenue and margins coming from uh, chemical products which are mainly demand driven products market driven products mm. it is difficult to uh, predict in a uh, concrete and concise manner right so but we are quite hopeful to at least maintain the stable uh, stability in our uh, 
supply chain management and the uh, earnings right okay which is why i asked for a range so i know this is difficult to predict there are many moving parts but you know i think all analysts would like to at least be able to forecast some kind of range and 3 to 25% is still a pretty large range and is 4% lower than what you've delivered this quarter so my question is is 20 to 25% sustainable uh, okay for that uh, sir, for a range see this is this being a cyclical nature of a business you can refer and take uh, last 5 years average uh which should be maintainable please don't go on a quarterly basis go on a yearly basis right okay thank you very much all the best thank you ladies and gentlemen due to time constraints that was the last question i now hand the conference over to the management so mr pack for closing comments over to you sir uh for a closing comment to be handed to over to mr shah our company secretary yeah uh, on behalf of uh, gnfc management i would like to express my sincere thanks to the investors for putting their confidence in the management and at the same time i extend my hearty thanks to um, batiwala and karani uh, for making this event on call investors meet a grand success and hope the management has uh, been able to explain and clarify the queries to the satisfaction of investors to enable them to make conscious decisions on the investment their investment decisions right uh, thank you one and all for this successful on call meet Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you very much, members of management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Bhatiwala and Karani Securities, that concludes today's conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.